Welcome back to The Dish. Kentucky Derby is less than four weeks away. The field coalescing with just one last opportunity for points that Saturday at Keeneland. But without a doubt, the man who joins me, the Paddock Prince himself, David Levitch, some strong opinions. We certainly know the favorites at this point, David. I don't think anything that happens in the Lexington is going to change. And really, nothing much has changed uh, toward the top of your list. No, I think um, Forte is probably going to be the favorite at this point. I would say that Tapit Trice and Practical Move will be vying for the second choice. And then I guess the Japanese horse is going to be around there. I know you're not a big fan of him, but it sounds like he's getting more and more interesting to a lot of people. So there's another horse you could throw in the mix. I saw in the Lexington this weekend that Confidence Game is running. So he's not doing your train up to the Derby, it appears. No, that's uh, and we'll we'll take a look at your top ten here and discuss confidence game. Who is not among your top ten and would not be among mine as of now? I hate the train up to the Derby move. I'm a big believer in needing a nine for long prep. Now he's not going to get that. He's going to have back to back eight and a half for long races, uh, but at least he's running three weeks before the Derby. As you noted, Forte and Tapa Trice, your top two. Um, I'm actually surprised to see that you have Derma is number three, though. Okay, I'm not saying he's the third likeliest winner of the race. I just feel like if this was a if it was a ten horse race and these were the ten these are the ten best horses at this point. I'm not saying he's going to win because, as we know, they've struggled here, but. I feel like if you look at the American horses and you just go down the list, I feel like he's a better horse in two fills. I feel like he's a better horse in verifying hit show. I don't know what to do with practical move. I don't know if he can get the distance. He had an absolutely perfect trip in the San Anita Derby. I mean, he got a rail split and he was barely holding off the closers. So I'm a little confused on him at this point. While he does have the best figures going into the race, Kings Barnes, a horse that could be the wise guy horse in this race. Three for three, perfect trips, tactical speed. And then there's a lot of closers like Angel of Empire, Skinner, who needs it. Like I said last week, Skinner needs a rider change. He hasn't got that yet. He probably would have won the San Anita <laughs> Derby with a better timed ride. Where would you have him ranked if Irad was aboard? I mean, I feel like I would pro- I would definitely have him above Angel of Empire as a closer. I'd probably have him five. I'd probably have him above, King- above Kings Barnes. And then, I don't know, maybe the Japanese horse is a little high on my list, but I mean, the way this race is shaping up, there's just the American horses, just some of them do not do anything for me. Well, I mean, I, I said this uh, with my fair odds, which also went up today. I'll throw a link in the comments. Uh, speaking of which, like and subscribe. We never say to do that, but you should. Uh, but one thing I said, and you have Skinner uh, in your top 10. I like the runner up in the Santa Anita Derby as well, Mandarin Hero. And by like, I mean, I like him more than probably half the field. He's on the outside looking in right now. And even Cyclone Mischief, I would say I like more than half the field that's drawn in. Uh, So I'm definitely hoping for some defections because a horse like Skinner, and granted, I I know you're not interested at all given the rider, but I'd have a really hard time passing at 20 to 1. No, and I I don't think Skinner has an issue getting the distance. I just worry about He's had to make so many premature moves in his races. I just feel like he needs he needs a little change, I feel like, to say it nicely. And I think if he did get a change in the Derby, I think he's a horse, like you said, that if he was 25 to 1, I don't know if I'd be not using him in exotics or pick fours or pick fives, something along those lines um, at 25 to 1. And then, you know, there's like Angel of Empire. I feel like he's a more talented horse than Angel of Empire, but – if Flavian Pratt rides Angel of Empire, I'm going to give him the nod instead of Skinner. Sure. No, I understood. And uh, lowest on this list, but does split the field. Number 10 hit show. Uh, runner up in the wood. Uh, n- no love for the actual winner? No, I don't know what to do with that race. I, um, I don't – the wood memorial has not been great, as we've said. I don't know. Hit show – it was, it was a funny race in the lane because his rider claimed foul, but his rider was the one causing most of the incidents. He had his elbow in Jose Ortiz's lap at one point. So I don't know what to do with his show. He, he just, he's just another closer in this race, and I don't think he's one of the best options, if that makes sense. I just 
I know he didn't have a great post, but he didn't have a bad trip. I mean, Lord Miles was running 70 buyer figures coming into that race, and he could now duel him in a horse that was a maiden who I liked, who got a perfect trip dreamlike. I just feel like if he was that great, he would have won. He would have overcame that post position and win that race. It's kind of like Forte in the Florida Derby. Everybody's kind of off him, I feel like, or I guess the experts are off him because it wasn't a huge figure, but he got the job done from post 11 and hit show couldn't get the job done from post 12. So I just don't think he's as caliber as some of these other horses. No, I'd, I'd say that's fair. Uh, three weeks from Saturday as a handicapper and someone who's going to write a lot about it. And you and I are going to talk about it at a, at a seminar here in Louisville. What are the final pieces of the puzzle for you uh, in terms of who you actually end up betting in the race or how you bet the race? I don't know. I think this year, I think Pletcher has a good, strong, a good one, two punch and maybe even a one, two, three punch. Hmm. I know the field can change. So as it gets closer, we'll see what like, you know, go rocket ride, for example, losing him. He didn't run in the Sandy Derby. That was a big pace presence. So, you know, just looking at the forms when the, you know, probably the top 22 come out kind of as it gets closer, just looking at the form, seeing who the options are with speed and, I just feel like I know everybody's all forte. I shouldn't say everybody because he's probably going to be the favorite because a lot of people that are just going to the track for the Derby are going to see all the ones and they're going to bet him. But I still feel like he is the horse to beat. So I'll probably, after looking at him, I think Tabitha Trice is super talented. But I, he his running style worries me a little bit. But at the same time, he keeps getting it done and it looks like he wants to run for days. Hmm. So I think just we'll see when the programs come out and the speed in the race and all those things. Well, uh, certainly a lot of chatter on the Derby over the next three and a half weeks, but we are in the midst of the Keeneland meeting. And uh, I know you had a good start to the meet eight for 21. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a good start. Um, I think the meet this weekend, I saw the card. They're going to be just as good. The Wednesday and Thursday cards are good for weekday cards. The makers mile is Friday. Modern games is coming. Like you said, we talked about earlier at the Lexington this weekend, but I thought overall the track was fair. You saw speed. You saw closers on both surfaces, so that's good at Keeneland because their dirt can sometimes be speed favoring. So I think it was pretty fair for the most part. It was a fun couple days to start. And uh, don't want to sleep on Aqueduct as well uh, now that you're in the Naira full swing. And there is a pick six it's carryover six. on Thursday. That is a dollar minimum non-jackpot at Aqueduct. So uh, certainly a lot of derby chatter, but uh, don't want people to forget all the great information available every day via the paddock prints, uh, Keeneland Wednesday through Sunday, Aqueduct. Uh, they, if they, they're they still Thursday through Sunday, correct? Yeah, and the pick six on Thursday is a 60-some thousand dollar carryover. It has three turf races and three dirt races, three turf races. Weather, I think, is supposed to be good. So it's actually a fun sequence that I'll probably be playing. All right. And uh, there's a mandatory payout on Saturday at Mahoning Valley. Will you be doing a sheet for that? No, I think I'm out on that one. I'm going to refer to the Ed DeRosa grid on Twitter for that, and I'll blindly play Ed DeRosa's grid picks. All right. The grid will be up uh, in the Steel City. And for the bigger circuits, Paddock Prince have you covered. Aqueduct and Keeneland. Uh, we'll put a link to that in the comments as well. Uh, well, I'd say the I'm not sure what to look forward to next week. Maybe some shakeup with uh, the Lexington if confidence game runs great. I could actually see warming to him a little bit. But one of those situations, you don't want him to run too great because uh, three weeks back, if he were to run a big top, would would also be a negative. So precarious balancing act for Keith DeSorno. Yeah, but I will say if he can come back and validate his race in the um, Risen Star, I think that would – Rebel. Not the Risen Star, the um, – Rebel. Rebel, sorry. I think it would be um, – I think it would be confident. if That would give you confidence if you like the horse because at least he showed that he can do it again. Coming back in three weeks, I guess, would be tough. But from here on out, I guess – and now it just starts the bubble wrapping of all the horses and all 20 of them are working fantastic and they're all going to get A-plus workouts and they're all going to be the best thing on the ground each time they go out there. So I guess we'll just have to watch the morning works. And I think that's really one of the fun parts, I guess, because we live here in Louisville. That's one of the fun parts of Derby is being able to go to watch the works and all the build up to the race itself with all the big, I saw Pletcher's bringing his horses in this weekend. I'm, you know, Cox has his here. So there'll be a lot of big time 
all the derby horses should be here soon. I saw the Japanese horses are here, so it looks like everybody's getting here. They're here, yep. I uh, did see Yakteen said he's going to train practical move at Santa Anita until uh, the bitter end, so uh, we won't get a look at him till two. How weeks. do you feel about that? Yeah. I mean, he was here, I think he was here pretty early last year and didn't go well, so mixing it up. And this is actually his horse, so. Yeah, he knows his horse better. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. All right. Well, that's it for this week's The Dish. Uh, again, Paddock Prince available every day at Keeneland and Aqueduct. Carry over at Aqueduct Thursday. Great racing all week long, including that grade one makers, Mark Mile, and a Derby Prep Friday and Saturday, respectively. Good luck.